I have your brain scanned and permanently backed up in case something terrible happens to you, which it's just about to. Okie dokie, we got all of our parts laid out now. The first part that we showed you uh, before we shut the camera off is the input shaft. And there is one of those, and that's noticeable by uh, the little slot that you'll see in there, as well as the C-clip holder on the end. The second part is a teeny tiny little silver cross pin, and it is 2 millimeter by 10 millimeter. And then, oops, stuff's rolling away there. And then we're going to have a teeny tiny little C-clip, as you can see there. Um, this is a uh, little E-ring installer tool, which I got at my hobby shop, I love it. But there's a teeny tiny little C-clip there that we're going to be using. Then we have a bevel gear, it's a 13 tooth. We need one of those, as you can see there. Then we have a, according to the directions, your AX30500 is a heavy duty lavker. So make sure you get your heavy duty lavker out of there. And we're going to go ahead and install that when it's time. And then we have a 38 tooth bevel gear. It's pretty cool with the directions here because everything is actual size and lines up. So if there's any, any doubt, you can set the part down on the manual and uh, it'll get you where you're going real quick. Then we have one M12 by 10 millimeter cap screw. And then what we did was... Okay, guys, it's time to pay your bills now. You have to listen to this. We threw away all the bearings that came with the kit. And we went ahead and went to www.fasteddybearings.com. Okay, for you people out there that didn't catch that, that's fasteddybearings.com. And we paid 99 cents a bearing, and they're excellent, excellent quality. We, uh, guy's a schmuck, but we use them all the time. You know, I kind of hate when you order something and he actually ships it the same day you order it. That really annoys me. But uh, we've got two of the uh, 10 by 15s and we have two 5 by 11 right there. And then we have some solid axle dog bones, 6 by 74 millimeters. Now there's two different sets of bones in there, so make sure you grab the right ones. Uh, one set is longer, and that's not the set that you want. You want the smaller one that has the uh, little knob on the end there. So we're going to set that out and there's two of those. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the top here and it's basically step number one and again I'm just showing you how to read the directions and it's going to show us how to put together the first shaft and as you can see there's a highlighted part over here which is optional parts that you can purchase and if you are going to be doing any upgrading with original parts, now's the time to do it. Um, you can order the stuff in before you start building it, so you don't have to take it back apart. But we're going to build it out of the box, just like it is. So just notice to me that you can't see what I'm doing because the light's in the back. So we're going to turn that off. First thing that uh, we're going to do is to insert the little cross pin into the shaft here just like so. Make sure it doesn't fall out. And then we're going to slide the bevel gear over and on the bevel gear you can see that there is a little slot in the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and put that on and make sure that our pin doesn't slide out. And we're going to insert the pin into the slots on the bevel gear so it doesn't rotate. And you can see that it's pretty much lock solid. And then we're going to install the C-clip onto the top. And it's beveled down in there, so I don't know if my bright idea of using my C-clip tool is going to work. It is not. So we're going to have to uh, revert back to fail-safe here and use a pair of needle-nose pliers. 
And it's always fun working for the camera, so you can laugh at me because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing rather than actually doing it. So we're going to go ahead and press the C-clip on, just like that. And you're going to want to make sure that it snaps on, and you can go ahead and use your nail and rotate it around uh, just to make sure that it's fully inserted. So when you're done with step number one, the shaft should be secured to the gear. See, that wasn't that hard. We're through step one and you haven't cut your finger off yet. Okay, so that's step one. Now we are going to move on to step number two. And it is showing us now, that's not listed on the side, however it's listed here, that we need to get the part number AX8002, which was in the first bag that we had grabbed. So it's in there. Go ahead and grab it. And it looks like at this point we are going to have to put our part number AX30500 right inside this little puppy. And that, again by your directions, is called a heavy duty lofker. So we're going to insert our lofker into the plastic housing. And you can see there's two little tabs here. Maybe you can't, I don't know. But there's two little tabs there and there are some metal tabs on here. So it looks like it is unidirectional. It doesn't matter which way it goes in, I don't think. I've never built this before. So we're going to go ahead and just pop that little puppy right in there, just like that. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially.